Hi Trinity friends, I'm here with my friend Carol and with Aunt today and with Otter. And I'm here to talk to you today about the eighth station of the cross. You know, we've been doing the stations of the cross all through Lent. And we've gone through one and two, three and four, five and six. And, and today we're talking about seven and eight. And I want to talk specifically about number eight. And this is a part of the story uh, about Jesus that I remember from being a child myself. And it's the part where um, Jesus is having a hard time carrying the cross. It's very heavy. And somebody uh, is walking by and the people say, uh, can you help him? Can you carry that for him? And uh, the uh, person that is stopped and asked to do that is, is a man named Simon. Simon of Cyrene, and he does stop to help. And I always remembered that part as being, being a kid because I could identify with that, being, being a helper. So I'm gonna read uh, all three of the Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospel writers, talk about this part of the story. And they all talk about this man by name. And so I'm gonna read those three scriptures real quick for us so we can hear that part of the story, okay? So here's how, here's what Matthew says. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. So there we learn that his name is Simon and that he is from Cyrene. And that's how they named people in those days. They said, Simon of Cyrene, uh, Judith, of Arlington, right? Right. Um, so here's what Mark says about it. Uh, the gospel writer Mark, he says, and they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. Oh, wow. We learned some new stuff, didn't we? We learned that he lived out in the country, that Cyrene was out in the country. We also learned that he was a father and that he had at least two boys whose names were Alexander and Rufus. Ah, okay, and here's what Luke says. And as they led him away, they seized one, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. We learn a little something else in, in Luke's telling. We learn that Jesus walked and Simon followed carrying the cross. So you can get a very good visual of that scene by listening to all three of the gospel writers, right? What they have to say about this part of the story. So there are some uh, overall things that we learn in this story, and I want to talk about those for a minute. Are you guys, you guys good? Uh, first of all, Jesus needed help. Now, we don't often think about Jesus needing help, do we? We, we think about Jesus helping people, but we don't think too much about Jesus being the one who needs help, right? Right. But in this story, Jesus needed help. The cross was very heavy, and he was having trouble carrying it. Have you ever needed help, Otter? Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah, Otter says he's needed help lots of times. Uh, he says that sometimes, you know, one time there was a big storm and he needed to gather up some stuff and he needed help so he could get it done quickly before the storm came. And he said that um, another time, uh, he had a lot of food that he wanted to save up, and he needed help getting it all back to the den. So, you know, lots of times. That, that's good. So, how does it feel? Aunt needs help, too. Ne does Aunt need help, too? He was at a picnic the other day, and there was a hamburger too big for him to take home all by himself. Oh. So he had to call his friends. I had to call his friends to help him. Yeah, I bet it took a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. So, how does it feel to need help, Otter? Well, 
yeah, sometimes it feels a little bit a, a little bit strange to need help because you would like to think, for instance, before that storm, that you could all by yourself get everything ready. That that you wouldn't need anybody to help you. That you're you're big and strong otter. You could take care of it all by yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we we don't like to ask for help. Sometimes we we'd rather feel like we could do it ourselves. But everybody needs help sometimes. Even Jesus in this story needed help. So let me ask you one more thing, Otter. How does it feel when someone comes along to help you? Yeah, that's one of, it's one of the best feelings in the whole world. When you are looking at a great big task and you just can't possibly imagine getting it done all by yourself and somebody comes along and helps you, that is a wonderful feeling. I've had that feeling when I had cooked a big dinner and I had used almost every dish in the kitchen and I thought, I'll never get all these dishes done. I'll never get all these pots and pans cleaned. I'll never get all this done. And then somebody came along and said, I'll help you. I'll help you do it. And that was a great feeling. I just have to tell you that's a great feeling. Yeah, yeah. So those are some things we learn in this story. Something else I think is interesting about this story, Ann, Potter, Carol, we know Simon's name. Now, in Scripture, there are lots and lots of people. People Jesus healed, people Jesus knew, people Jesus talked to, had conversations with, and we know some of their names. But lots and lots and lots of them, we never learn their names. We just find out that there was a man who had a limp and Jesus helped him. Or there was a man who was paralyzed and Jesus helped him. We don't ever learn their name or their friends' names or, or whoever else. But in this story, we learn some very specific things. We learned his name was Simon and that he was from Cyrene, which was out in the country, and that he had two sons named Rufus and Alexander. Gosh, we, have, we learned a lot about him. And you know what I think is interesting about that, Otter? I think sometimes people are remembered for a very long time for a small act of kindness that they do. And they might not even know. They might not even, in their memory, remember doing it or think that it made much of an impact at all. But... They are remembered for a very long time for that small act of kindness. So, like with Simon of Cyrene, you know, billions and billions of human beings have lived on the earth since this time. But we still remember Simon of Cyrene because of that one thing he did on Good Friday, helping Jesus. So that is just a great thing to remember, isn't it? How important it is to be kind and that, that people remember and God remembers those kind acts. And the, finally, the thing that we learn is that Simon was willing to carry the cross for Jesus. And, you know, they, they asked him if he would help, and he could have said no. He might have had other things to do that day. He might have been in a hurry. We don't know anything about what was going on for him that day, except that when they said, would you help carry this cross? He said, yes, I will help. I will do it. So, when have, when have you been a helper, Aunt? He says, I'm a helper all the time. That's what ants do. We have a leader and the rest of us help out. Mm. Just like bees. Ah, yeah. So, Aunt, I hear that there is something very, very special about ants that might relate to this story, too. I hear that ants can carry many times their weight. They are so strong that they can carry something that weighs many times as much as they weigh. Is that true, Aunt? Yes. That's true. And 
not only can an individual ant carry things that are many times its weight, we band together for something that's even bigger and help each other out so that we can carry big things around and back to our ant hills too. Mm -hmm. So we learn to work as a team. Uh, yes, I like that. And you know, I was asking Otter how it feels when somebody helps you. And I'm going to ask you, Ann, how does it feel when you help someone? Ant says that he gets a really good feeling when he helps somebody else because it means that he's done something to make their life easier and to help them get things done faster, too. That's, that's good. And it's being a friend. That's what being a friend is all about, is being available and willing to help. Oh, that's great, Aunt. That's really great. How do you guys think God feels when we help each other? Oh, you think God smiles down on us when we help each other? He thinks God jumps up and down for joy and claps his hands. Yay! I like that. I like that. I think you're both right. I think God is happy when we help each other and come alongside each other when somebody is struggling or somebody is, is trying to do something that's really hard and we come along and help them. I think God, God smiles down on us when we act that way. That's what Aunt said. She smiles. Yes, yes. So, uh, we're going to sing a song. And you might have heard this song last week if you watched worship with your you know, family. And this song uh, is, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. And sometimes people think about Simon of Cyrene following Jesus and carrying that cross just you know, like the first person who followed him knowing how, you know, what it meant. And so we're going to sing, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. And then I'll tell, we'll stop between each, each uh, stanza and I'll tell you what the words are. Okay, are you ready? It goes like this. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. That was really great singing. So 
This week, you're going to get three coloring sheets. You're going to get stations 9, 10, and 11. And I want to know if you have sent any of your artwork into the church. We need your art for the Good Friday and Holy Saturday Stations of the Cross walkthrough. We want to have lots of art, the coloring pages or crosses you've drawn or anything else that you want us to have that you did because of us doing the Stations of the Cross. So ask somebody to help you scan it and send it in to the church office or drop it by the church office. And you can leave it in the outside office in the office box. Yeah. Yes, yes. Aunt says, my mom let me put mine in the video each week. Oh, nice. Aunt, did you do all that good coloring? That is fantastic. I am so glad you're going to be seeing that artwork when you come on Friday, Holy Friday and Saturday. And we want to see your artwork too, so send it in to us, okay? All right, we'll see you later. Bye.